Oh, you know so too, eh? Yeah. All right, I heard that time knots. That's fine, you know, like, I'll do that time knots for you, but I can't sing it anymore. But I'll recite it for you, because it's a wonderful story <clears throat> about two old cowboys in Arizona, and uh, they have a wonderful kind of slang in Arizona that I can't hardly speak. But Peter Lafarge, who I met at the Madison Square Garden Rodeo, and he uh, later settled down to write a bunch of songs, and he wrote the Ballad of Ira Hayes. And uh, Peter was part Indian, and he felt very strongly about uh, the way the Indi Indians have been treated. Uh, and so he uh, wrote a lot of great songs about that, and I was with him through some of those writings in the Earl Hotel uh, in the Greenwich Village there, Bob and Peter and I. And uh, one day I was visiting Peter in New York, and he called up Gail I. Gardner out in Arizona, who was the author of this wonderful song and story about uh, uh, tying knots in the devil's tail. <clears throat> and it's autobiographical song, and it, he mentions his, his, his own name in there. He was known uh, as uh, Buster Jig, and his friend and compadre was Sandy Bob, but I had gotten the words wrong. I learned it from a record of some folk singer who was singing it wrongly. And it turns out that there were a lot of people going around singing it with the wrong words. And I knew it as uh, Rusty Jigs and Sandy Sam, and that wasn't right at all. It was Buster Jig, not Rusty Jigs. Buster Jig, J-I-G. His father's name was James I. Gardner. He had a grocery store in Prescott, Arizona. And the son of J.I.G., they called him Buster Jig, meaning son of Jig. And so that was his name, and he didn't like the idea of people going around mispronouncing his name. But it's called Buster Jig and Sandy Bob tying knots in the devil's tail. And I could start off singing it with a melody, but it won't last long, but I'll tell you the story it goes like this. Because we called up old Gardner out in Arizona, and I says, I've been singing this song for a long time, Mr. Gardner, and I love it. And all the cowboys seem to love this song. It's their favorite song. He says, have you got the words right? I said, well, I said, gee, I don't know. He said, oh, give me your address, and I'll mail you a copy of the words. So uh, years later, I finally got to meet him out in Arizona. He was 95, and he was not well at all. In fact, he died the next day after I met him. But I did sing him the song, and I, it was Utah Phillips who just passed away about two weeks ago. They told me, Jack, you're going to have to go down there to Arizona and sing Gail I. Gardner the song and sing it to him right, you know, because he's pretty mad. <laughs> and so I did. I sang it all the way down here in my motorhome, singing it to my dog, Denali. He knew all the words. <laughs> when we got to Arizona, Denali could sing it. <laughs> and I spent three weeks uh, on the ranch there in, near Prescott. It is way high up in the slurry peach where the yellow jack pines grows tall. That Buster Jig and Sandy Bob and a roe deer camp last fall. And they're taking them they're taking their ponies and they're running irons and maybe a dog or two. And it allows a brand of a long-eared calf to come within their view. And any old dog that flopped long ears and didn't bush up by day had his long ears whittled and his old hat sizzled in the most artistic way. Then said Buster Jig to Sandy Bob as he throwed his seagull down. Seago, by the way, is a slang expression meaning a seagoing rope from the term. Uh, they used to rope 
the lariat ropes before they come in with nylon, which everybody uses now, was a kind of a hard lay manila rope that was made in Plymouth, Massachusetts by the Plymouth Rope Walk that made whale line for harpooning whales and the cowboys used to call their lasso whale line or seago, meaning seagoing rope. He throws his seago down, says I'm tired of cow pyrography and I figures I'm a going to town. So they saddles up and they hits them a lope for it weren't no sight of a ride and them was the days when an old cow punch could pile up his dry inside. It says Buster J to the dead. Oh, yeah. They starts her in a Kentucky bar, Kane Tucky bar at the head of Whiskey Row, and they ends her up at the depot house, some 40 drinks below. And they winds her up and they turns her around and he goes the other way. And to tell you the boy, them boys, to tell you the Lord forsaken truth, them boys got drunk that day. <laughs> And as they was a-headin' back to camp and a-packin' a mighty good load, who should they meet but the devil himself come a-prancin' down the road? And old devil, he says, you cowboy skunks, you better go hunt your holes, cause I've come up from the hell's rim rocks to gather in your souls. He says, Buster Jig to the devil, though I know we're tight, no devil ever took an old cow punch without one kind of a fight. So he builds him a hole in his old throw rope and he throws it straight and true and he caught the devil right around the horns and he's taking his dallies too and old Sandy Bob was a real man with his gut line coiled up neat. He shakes her out and he builds him a loop and he, he caught the devil's hind feet. And they throwed him down on the desert ground while our arms was getting hot and they cropped and swallow forked his ears and they branded him up a lot. <laughs> Pruned him up with a knee horn and saw, tied knots in his tail for a joke, rid off and left him bellering there necked up to a big jack oak. And if you're ever up in the siry peach and you hear one hell of a wail, You'll know it's nothing but the devil himself a raising hell about the knots in his tail. <laughs> Don't step in the coil. <laughs>